Many hunters today wonder why those older, more mature animals with extra long antlers are rarely seen. Even though they try their hardest to find one, using all the modern technology, it still didn't happen. Back when I was growing up hunting from a very young age, deer were rarely seen. To us it didn't matter whether we shot a hind or a stag, either was a massive achievement in itself. The meat was our primary goal, and many a time we left the antlers on the head in the bush where it lay. I too sometimes wonder where that elusive Samba stag is hiding in the valley. But for this trip, I decided to forget all about big stags and just enjoy being in the bush and the sport of hunting itself. And hopefully get in as close as possible to these animals and fill the freezer with some prime venison. Arriving in the afternoon and keen to look around in this new area, I used the weather to determine where the deer may be. I decided on a sit and wait with the bow and headed out around the spur to a hopeful ambush location. It's always a good idea to get to your ambush location early, not only to position yourself correctly with the wind and other factors, but to also remove any chances of other animals letting the deer know that you are there before they start to approach. After scouting the area for an hour or so, I eventually found a nice trail that I believe the animals were using. I decided to hide up behind a large tree so that it would cover my movements for an attempted ambush. After clearing any noise making debris and covering up, all I had to do was sit and wait, listen and watch for any movement. Some days I have sat for five or six hours straight waiting for animals to appear. It is such a game of patience. After two and a half hours, the light was fading fast. Then. I eventually heard an animal moving up the trail in front of me. What I didn't know was that there was another deer approaching me from behind. I don't know if you can see me still, and it's almost dark. That deer came up just behind the tree. Not even five metres from me. Probably four, three metres from behind me. And honked the hell out of me. Jesus Christ, scared the crap out of me. Oh. Oh. My heart's pounding. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh. The next morning I got up early and ventured over to a trail that I stumbled upon the previous afternoon while scouting the area. I unpacked all my gear and set up for another ambush. 
It was another extremely cold morning, and I was wondering how long I would last sitting in the one spot. When eventually, I managed to glass a deer moving a fair distance away that I expected would eventually follow the trail right into my field of view. Unfortunately, the deer chose a different direction. So as the sun came up, I decided the only chance I would have now was to move further around the mountain in hope that there were other deer still coming around the same trail. Just five minutes after I got there, a hind appeared walking in front of me and just eight metres away. Hidden behind the bush, I reached out to put the camera on, but as soon as I turned it on, the deer took off and once again, it was over. Samba's senses are incredibly sensitive, and any movement or sound that is not normal to them from a close distance will make them flighty, and more than likely, flee to safety. <sighs> bit of work getting out of there. That really sucked this morning. I swear if it wasn't for that camera I'd have the bow in my hand and as soon as the deer comes past we'll just put our through it easily. As soon as I reached up, as soon as I clicked it on I reckon it's heard, I don't know if it's heard the click because I've held my hand tight against it and sort of move it slow but then the, the lens just goes zzz, zzz, and I reckon it's heard that and just boom gone straight over the down the hill and over the other side. It's unreal. It's so hard to do this by yourself. It's it's insane. Especially when you're bow hunting. Really hard, but I don't care. I'm gonna keep doing it until I get one on the camera. Things may not always work out the way you want them to. And the fact is, with Samba hunting, they rarely do. But that is the sheer reason why we keep coming back. To hopefully get the experience that we chase. That afternoon when returning back to camp I came across a couple of massive rub trees that got me really excited. These rubs were seriously substantially used which told me that there were many deer, especially stags, that passed through this area. Not much further on, I found some fresh droppings and tracks that had been made that morning, so the deer were not far away. And when I stopped to glass the area ahead, I picked up a stag hiding between the logs and the trees. And when I tried to close the gap to within bow range, the wind came up my back and the stag stood up and started walking away slowly. But for some reason, he was not too worried about me. He just slowly fed his way down the hill. When I look back now, I'm not sure why I decided not to shoot that stag. It almost felt like he wanted me to, so I didn't. Something I've never felt when hunting before. In 2013, I embarked on one of the most enduring and incredible solar hunting expeditions of my life, during which I endeavoured to truly capture the whole hunting experience through good and bad times and remarkably take one of the most perfect Samba stags this country has ever seen. Join me on this amazing journey, which not only depicts a hunter's life, 
but also inspires and teaches you all about Samba hunting along the way. This film is truly a must watch for every keen hunter. It's definitely been a long time since I've felt a winter as cold as this. With daytime temperatures not getting much above zero, I had to get a fire going during the day just to stay warm. The clearer the days, the colder it was. There was one last valley I wanted to hunt before going home tomorrow. I decided that I would head in there for another ambush this evening. I often ask myself whether I've done everything possible to make sure that arrow counts should the opportunity arise. Having a perfectly tuned bow and correctly balanced arrows with a high quality sharpened broadhead is key to knowing that the arrow will fly through and create the right incisions needed to make a quick and ethical kill. There is so much to think about with hunting gear. But all that thinking should have been done at home, and now the hunting begins. I know I am prepared for the shot if it presents itself, and that is a great beginning to any hunt. To try and become a better hunter, it is important to understand that every move a deer makes is calculated. They are in no hurry to do anything don't need to go to work at a certain time, they don't need to go home at a certain time. They just need to stay alive and therefore have evolved to having incredible senses and skills to survive. Personally I tend to approach every hunt differently depending on the terrain and conditions. This also determines whether I take the gun or the bow. I know this may sound strange to many Sometimes I try and make the hunt more challenging by taking the boat and really testing my skills as a hunter. Heading into that valley that evening, I couldn't help thinking about all the massive rubs in the area. There had to be a mature stag somewhere hanging around. I did happen to come across a fallow deer, and its young one, which was a nice surprise, as I didn't think there were any in this area. That evening, I sat in ambush until it was no longer ethical to take a shot in the dark. I knew the deer were close, knowingly said to myself that as soon as I get up, I'm going to get honked. And like clockwork, it happened. This went on for at least eight minutes, but the ironic thing was that I could hear the deer that had retreated honking from a distance now, but I could also hear another deer standing about 20 meters from me that I just could not see in the dark. The 
It sounded to me like the hind that had retreated was honking and actually trying to tell the other deer near me to get out of there. Which tells me that the deer near me was a stag. Because if it was a young one, it would have retreated with the mother. With not much I could do in the darkness, I eventually retreated out slowly and back to camp so that the deer don't see me as a threat and hopefully don't leave the area. Stickers, caps and the Solar Samba Hunter adventure film are all available now at solosambahunter.com.au Being woken by a gunshot in the middle of the night is a pretty scary thing. Especially when you know these spotlighters are not far from your camp and most probably don't even know that you're there. I wanted to get out of my tent and turn the car headlights on so that they knew I was there, but I did not want to take the chance of getting shot at the same time. I was just glad my kids weren't with me at the time. Bloody spotlighters are up. 3.40 in the morning. Freaking lead and shots off left, right and centre. That's six shots going off. Can't go to sleep. Every ten minutes they just go off. Far out. They freaking shit me. Next morning was absolutely freezing. I did not have a good sleep that night and did not want to get out of my bed. And when I thought about the spotlight of shooting up the whole area, I figured there was no point. I really wanted to make the most of this trip and hunt my last morning up here as I was sure it would not be long before we went back into lockdown. Eventually when I did get out of the tent, it was still incredibly cold. I eventually decided it was time to leave and after packing up camp I thought I'd drive to the highest point of the track to see if I could check for any messages on my phone. There was only one message I received and it was from my brother. The message he sent to me said, we are desperate for some meat, please don't come home without any. Now at this stage I had already packed up all my gear ready to go home. And up until the spotlight had showed up last night, I had had some great encounters with the deer and happily accepted defeat on this adventure. However, sitting there thinking, I knew how much my friends and family could really do with the meat. And truthfully, I hated the fact that the spotlighters had got to me. They had put me completely off wanting to hunt this area anymore, and it was just not right. I decided to go for one last hunt but at this time of the day, the deer would be bedded. And it would be completely unethical to try and take a shot at a deer bouncing out of its bed with the bow. With that in mind, I put away the bow and took the gun and went for a walk. Now for some of you, this may be hard to believe, but what happened next left me completely stunned.
big stacks of stand in there. As I came down here, I scared a bunch of deer could walk down. I heard some thumping. I don't know if it got him or not, but all I could see was his neck. And I'm only about 60 meters from him. I took a shot and I haven't heard anything. I'm gonna to have to go down. I'd like to leave him for a bit, but in case I've got to finish him off. Nothing, no running off. Anyway, this is just a stag for meat, really. He looked alright, but everyone is hounding me for meat. There's a deer down there. Yep. It's down. I must have got him in the neck. He's a decent stag. He's a decent stag. Oh. Holy shit. He's a decent stag. Hang on. Switch it around again. He's a decent stag. I must have shot him in the neck. Straight down. Oh. He's out. Holy shit. He'd be close to 30. There's not a deer going up there. He'd be very close to 30. Unreal, eh? Unreal. <laughs> when you just don't expect it, well, I was kind of expecting to shoot a deer, but when you don't expect a big animal like that, 
Holy shit. Holy shit. Honestly, I'm stunned. I don't know where to start. I am just stunned. I just can't believe today. I tried so hard with the bow for the past two days and almost shot a couple of deer. And just, I wasn't expecting something like this. I was just gonna, gonna shoot a deer for meat. You know, it's funny how it happens like that. It is just unreal. This black's definitely gonna be caped out. Look at the size of him. He's gonna look great on the wall and he's totally even again. Nothing wrong with those antlers. You wouldn't believe it, would you? You would not believe it. Look at the size of that thing. He's huge. He'd be up there. He'd be right up there. I can't believe it. I was walking along and just saying to my dad up there, sadly he passed away about five months ago and then my mum passed away two months after that so much has been going on this year for me you would not believe broke my foot no work all kinds of crazy stuff and I'm walking along and I'm going come on dad there's got to be animal here and I, and I could almost hear him saying to me trust your instincts trust your instincts and that's what I did I looked over this side and I said you know what the track goes that way I reckon the deer can be over here and I've come along and I've walked straight over the top come down and he couldn't help but make some noise and the deer ran off and you know this guy's got to be like it is the middle of July not even the middle of July what is it yeah it must be about the middle of July now and I've never shot a stag like that in July I'll tell you that much and he must have been full rut and um I reckon he's with the females and they've taken off and he's just held his ground. That's what they do, they just stand up until they can see the danger themselves because they don't want to move. Usually they'll get up and they'll just run real fast and they'll go. But he, he won't want to move um, because he's in that crazy mindset, I reckon. But look at the size of that rack, seriously, that is insane. So, I'm, I'm, I'm literally shocked, literally shocked. That just happened. Just walked off that hill, down around the side of the gully, came back down. And you just thought the deer gonna be sitting over here. Walked straight on top of them, scared a bunch of them down the hill, came bolting down the hill here. Then I came further down, then I heard another one bolt. And then I just stopped and I thought, I'll oh, look at my binoculars. binoculars. I look into the binoculars and I see the stag head in the bushes looking at me. And he's just looking at me like, and he's just bouncing his, bouncing his leg. So, like I said, I think. He was with the females, they've gone, because they do, but if they're running, the stags are running, they'll hold the ground for a second, stand up like stupidly, what's going on, instead of running off, and then they'll run off, and then he's, while he was doing that, I managed to get that shot. Unreal. Unreal. Now, I've got to cut him right around, back around that gully, right up the top of the mountain up there. So what I might do is I might just bleed him tonight, bleed him out. I can't pull that stag up on the bloody, up the tree, there's no way. So I'll just hang him downhill and just bleed him out. Now it's not that steep here, where I am here. It's steep up there where I've got to get up to. But I've got one hell of a, hell of a time ahead of me. <laughs> now what time would you think it is now? Early morning, about eight, nine, or in the evening, right in the evening. Nah, man, I'm not kidding ya. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> two o'clock in the afternoon. I've just come down in the right spot where I thought the deer would be, and bam, straight into the sky. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And yet to see where I shot him. One shot with three through eight, he's gone. I didn't hear a single thing after that. I thought he'd be, I thought he'd be running off. But... Awesome. <laughs> yes. Now that is a head for the wall. That is definitely a head for the wall. What a great day. The time I spent in the bush on this particular adventure 
taught me a few things about hunting that I never really thought mattered. The main thing being to believe in yourself and enjoy the experience instead of sometimes making it stressful. Thinking that the spotlighters had taken every animal in the area, I decided to give up and go home. It was only because of my brother's message that I decided to put everything I had into one last hunt and in return was rewarded with this amazing animal. Over the years I can tell you that there are many thoughts that pass through a solar hunter's mind. But what I do want to tell you in this episode is that if you hunt for the love of hunting and not just shooting, killing or always thinking of trying to get the biggest stag out there, then I believe your chances of being rewarded one day become much higher. This is killing me. Absolutely killing me. Oh, the heat here. Oh, trying to get it out. And I've got to climb that mountain up there. Oh, and I've got about 100 mils of water left. There's no rivers here. Damn it. Oh, mate. Once again, this is what we do. Oh, mate. We love it.